At Sierra, discover top workout gear at incredible prices, which might lead to another discovery. Your headphones haven't been connected this whole time. Awkward. Discover top brands at unexpectedly low prices. Sierra, let's get moving. When you need mealtime inspiration, it's worth shopping Kroger, for thousands of appetizing ingredients that inspire countless mouth-watering meals. And no matter what tasty choice you make, you'll enjoy our everyday low prices. Plus, extra ways to save, like digital coupons worth over $600 each week and up to $1 off per gallon at the pump with points. So you can get big flavors and big savings. Kroger, fresh for everyone. Fuel restrictions apply. Thanks for choosing this free Anfield Index podcast. If you'd prefer to listen to this or any of our other shows without adverts, then now's the time to check out Anfield Index Pro. With AI Pro, you can supercharge your entire listening experience. You'll not only get all of our podcasts without the ads, but you'll have them far faster with our quick publish feature available exclusively for subscribers. AI Pro also puts you in the heart of our sound studio with an option to listen to many of our shows live and interact with the podcasters in real time as the shows are recording. Upgrading couldn't be easier. AI Pro is available on all popular podcast platforms. Just head on over to AnfieldIndexPro.com and get started today. Hello and welcome to the Daily Red, your lunchtime catch-up on all things Liverpool FC on a Thursday where the Reds are in the quarterfinal of the EFL Cup. A 3-2 victory over Brighton at the Amex last night. Outstanding stuff, and not only outstanding because we won a game of football, but outstanding because look at that team we put out. Vitislav Yaros starting in goal, Cleaving Kelleher getting some lovely rest. At the back, Connor Bradley, Gerald Quanza, Joe Gomez, and Andy Robertson. Robertson, the surprise inclusion there. Tyler Morton with Turoendo, Curtis Jones as a midfield core. Luis Diaz, Cody Gakko, Dominic Sabozlai as the attack. Lots and lots of lovely rest. The only ones that are surprising, Robbo, and the fact that both Curtis and Sabozlai started, but better they start, given they haven't played as much, than more Darwin have to start. Now, Ibu came off the bench, Darwin came off the bench, Alexis came off the bench, Mo came off the bench, and Trainioni came off the bench. But thankfully we saw no Trent. We saw no Virgil. Virgil was on the bench along with Costas, Quivin, and Ranel Jervé Young, or Jervé Young, another youngster getting uh, some time with the first team group. Really and truly, that's the best possible outcome. That we got to see such heavy rotation, and we won the game. We go to Southampton, In the next round, I believe it's the 17th of December. Same team again. No reason not to. I thought there were so many promising things that we saw last night. I thought Joe Gomez had a pretty solid game at centre-back. Connor Bradley, back fit and well. Got the whole 90 minutes. That's really, really good. Andy Robertson didn't have a great game and was... At fault for their second goal. Um, Gerald Kwanza, I thought, had a pretty good game other than the error he made for their first goal. Um, he was obviously taken off for Ibu, and I saw him getting a lot of criticism last night. And I just thought, like, what are people doing with their lives? This is a young central defender still learning his way. I don't understand why people were rushing to go online and say, well, he makes errors every single game or he can't be trusted or any of this kind of nonsense. Like, the best centre-back any of us have seen is Virgil van Dijk. When Virgil was Quance's age, he was playing for Groningen in the Netherlands. He was establishing himself as a first choice player at a second tier team in the area division. This idea that players have to be ready made at a certain point is nonsensical. Defenders tend to develop later than forward players. 
because so much of forward play is down to talent, ability, instinct, pace, creativity. So much of defensive play is down to reading the game, concentration, fundamentals. These are things that take much longer to develop than forward attributes. So the notion that Gerald Kwanza should be on the level of Ibu or Virgil is ridiculous. I, we saw people in the summer off the back of last season try to claim that Kwanza should be above, of Ibu, above Ibu in the pecking order. That was always ridiculous. And that's the type of garbage that puts undue pressure on young players. And it's the same thing we've seen with Connor Bradley. People hyping him to the moon. He's a very, very promising young player, as is Kwanzaa. They're very, very young. They're going to have rough games, rough months, where they make mistakes, where their form dips, where they look like football is entirely new to them. Because they're learning. And yet the reaction is this hate-filled rant from morons criticising a young defender who's got less than 50 games at the Premier League level under his belt. Like, it's so rare for a defender at a young age to really step up and play at the highest level. And many of them who do, they don't develop the right way. Look at Matthias De Ligt. At 17, Matthias De Ligt looked like he was the, the next Alessandro Nesta. And now, he looks like the next Harry Maguire. It, it's bizarre to me that people criticise young players the way they do. I think John Terry is one of the more overrated central defenders in Premier League history, and in, in fact, in football history. If you take a look at John Terry's career, he was the age Kwanzaa was now when he started to establish himself in Chelsea's first team. But then the following year, he became more of a squad player before re-establishing himself in the season he turned 23. And that's really where he kicked on from. 23 and onwards. Now, Quance's season last year is similar to what Terry put together in 0102. But then in 0203, Terry takes that step backwards, drops out of the, the first team, you know, regular starter spot, becomes a squad player, and in the following year re establishes himself. He'd also had, prior to that, a season as a regular squad player, which Kwanzaa didn't get. If you look at Kwanzaa's games played, like, it's minimal experience for a young player. He played 16 games on loan at Bristol Rovers. Okay, let's put that up against Terry's... Uh, 2000-2001 season where he played 26 games but for Chelsea. Then last season Kwanzaa played 33 games for us. Put that up against Terry's 01 2 season but Terry played 47 games that year. But then the following year drops back into more of a squad role which is happening to Kwanzaa now. Now I'm not suggesting Kwanzaa's going to establish himself as first choice next year. I'm really using John Terry, who's held aloft by so many as this magnificent centre-back, even though he had significant flaws in his game, such as not having any pace and not being particularly comfortable with the ball at his feet in tight spaces, which is something Kwanzaa got caught with last night. 
Kwonsa is on a similar trajectory as Terry was, but with less experience. And yet people expect him to be Virgil van Dijk, who, again, at the same age, was playing for Groningen in the area division. Central defenders will always develop slower, always, because so much of the game comes down to experience for them. And I thought he was fine last night, other than the error for the goal. Vitislav Garros, you can't blame for either goal. Um, wrong footed on the second one due to a deflection. He made two great saves. Two great saves. The, the, the save from the header is one of the best saves you're going to see all season. They had seven shots on goal. Obviously, two went in, meaning he had five saves. And I would say two of them were absolutely out of the top drawer. So we go ahead last night through Cody Gakbo, and this is the prototypical Cody Gakbo at PSV Eindhoven goal. Ball played to him in space on the left wing. He cuts in and he attacks the penalty box. And then it's an absolutely sensational finish. On 63, he puts us two up. Again, it's a very typical Gakpo goal. It's a low, well-struck shot. Cody is the most consistent striker of a ball at Liverpool. And I said this before we signed him. If you just watch the mechanics of how he strikes the ball, it's a lovely fluid motion. It's very, very consistent. It's the same striking technique pretty much every time. The only drawback with it is it's quite a long striking motion because he's such a tall guy. But the two goals last night are exceptional. They get one back to a, through a dinger. That obviously comes from the Kwanzaa error. But then Lucho wraps it up for us on 85 does really well to bring the ball down under pressure, create the space himself, and it's a good finish. And Tariq Lamptey scores with the aid of a deflection after a really poor defensive header by Andy Robertson, who I didn't think played well last night. So on we march. I got the lineup I wanted, and look, I said I'd be happy to see us spin this competition off, but if he's happy to play the team he played last night, then there's no reason not to have an extra game. And if we beat Southampton, go and play that same team in the semi-final in both legs. Plenty of rest, plenty of rotation, plenty of opportunity for other players to come in. Again, Yaros last night making his case, which was really good to see. Bradley getting minutes, Kwanzaa getting minutes, Traineoni getting minutes. And Tyler Morton, who I thought had a really tidy game in the middle of the park. And it wasn't an easy game for him. You're up against Jakob Mulder and Mats Viefer, who are big, strong, athletic, rangy players. And he more than handled us all. More than did his part in that win. So very, very pleased by that. Great to see, obviously, Diaz and Gakpo get goals and continue their good form uh, for the season. Sobo should have scored. I think he should have scored one. But again, I thought he was pretty decent. I thought it was a decent outing for Curtis. Endo, he did the job. He did the job he was asked to do. He got involved in the battle. Fair play to him. Um... It obviously wasn't the full strength Brighton team either. Like we, we shouldn't overlook that, but still a pretty strong Brighton team and, and I thought we handled them pretty well. Thought we handled them pretty well. So I think we can all be happy with last night. Like I say, it is Southampton next in the quarter final. The other teams in the quarter final, Tottenham play United, Tottenham knocked out sit excuse me, knocked out City, United walloped uh, Leicester 5-2 should have been 7 or 8 Newcastle will take on Brentford Newcastle knocked out Chelsea Brentford beat Sheffield Wednesday on penalties on the Tuesday night and Arsenal against Crystal Palace Arsenal with a comfortable 3-0 win over Preston Palace with the big upset of the round going to Villa 
and beating them. Again, Villa heavily rotated. But for Palace, it's a good win because it's back-to-back wins now and hopefully they can shake off their poor start to the season and get back to being the best team that football had ever seen as they were at the end of last year. So there we go. Tottenham, United, Newcastle, Brentford, Arsenal, Crystal Palace and Southampton, Liverpool. They are the last eight. If we win that, and let's say we draw the winner of Newcastle-Brentford in the semi-final, you would fancy our chances at getting to the final. I mean, you'd fancy our chances against either Tottenham or United as well. You'd you'd fancy them against Palace. Arsenal is the only team left in this competition, I think, that would have a real shot at beating us. Now, look, if we played a weakened team against Spurs and they played their full strength team, they would beat us. There's there's no doubt. Newcastle would beat the team that we played last night. Um, United, it would just depend on who the manager is and who turned up on the day. But I think we've got a chance to win this tournament. But ultimately, I don't care. You know, I won't care until we get to the final. If we get to the final, then I'll want us to win it. Up until then, it's just kind of an inconvenience. However, as I said, if Arna wants to use it as he did last night, then it, it can become a benefit for us. Because players that we may need through the season get minutes and get opportunity. Um, on This Is Anfield, there is a piece entitled No Quanza Overreaction, but as Robertson lost his place. So yeah, Robin was the sort of the biggest surprise included in the team last night. I think everybody assumed it would be Costas. So does this signal that Costas is going to start at the weekend, does this signal potentially a run of Costas as the first choice left back? Robbo has not been good this year. He was not good last year. And he wasn't good the year before that. In fact, to find good Andy Robertson on a regular basis, you'll have to travel all the way back to the midpoint of the 21-22 season. And I've been saying this for the longest time, and it gives me no joy to say it. Andy Robertson has declined significantly over the last two and a half years. He he just has. He's not the same player. He's not nearly as good defensively. He's not as quick. He's not as relentless. And he's not as good going forward. His decision-making is poor. His crossing is not as consistent. Now, it is because he was played far too much for a number of years between us and Scotland. It's entirely down to that. Robble's legs got run off. He's another victim of the way we played under Jürgen. Sadio, the same. Bobby, the same. Fabinho, the same. All of those players just had the legs run off them. Ginny Wijnaldum. They had the legs run off them. They were overplayed because, for whatever reason, a smaller squad was what was wanted. With injuries in other places, those players had to play every single game. It just is what it is. And look, Sadio is washed. Bobby's washed. Fab is washed. Ginny's washed. So is Robbo. Robbo's a little bit younger than the rest, but he's no less washed. Because he got played so heavily for so long. And then nobody, nobody would ever question the effort level. He's still giving everything he has. It's just that what he has is not what he used to have. That lad has given us every single bit of talent, effort, desire, determination, and whatever else he had to give us. Needle, since the day he joined, he has been an unbelievably good servant to this club. He will stand in the pantheon of Liverpool greats. Without question, he's one of the 
three or four best left backs to ever play for this club. You know, you'd put Kennedy there. I think you'd have to. I think you'd have to put Jerry Byrne there for the older heads. I think Stevie Nickel. Now, Nickel, you could say he wasn't really a left back because he played in so many positions, whatever. But Robble stands right up there with all of them. Emlyn Hughes obviously played quite a bit at left back as well. Robble stands pretty much with every one of them. Maybe a little below Emlyn, and if you're including Nickel, a little below him as well. But he stands with the rest. And he's certainly the best left back we've had since Kennedy. And, well, it, it, not including Nickel, who obviously, like I say, played in a bunch of different positions, centre-back, right-back, midfield. The best permanent left-back since Kennedy, which is the better part of 40 years ago, over 40 years ago now at this point. And believe me, if you're younger, if if you grew up with, like, your first sort of memories being the Benitez era, you missed some some very questionable stuff. Like, Rob Jones is one of my favourite Liverpool players of all time, but he was not a left-back. But we suffered through that. We had Stigging, Gibbjornaby. It, it wasn't a good time. It wasn't a good time. You know, Steve Stoughton was okay, but Rob was a lot better. Um, Yeah, it wasn't a great time. Obviously, through the Rafa era, we had some drops there as well. You know, we had, look, we had John Arnarisa, who did a good job. I, I will always love Jimmy Traore, but by God, there was some absolute howlers in there. Um, the Senna, Aurelio, who couldn't run because his hamstrings would explode. Paul Koncheski under Hodgson. John Flanagan under Rogers. Like it was, it was a rough time for a long time. And then this fellow arrived, and he he just made the position his own and became the best left back in the league for for years. And he was. There was no, nobody would doubt it. He was for years. He's just not anymore. And he's not even in the conversation anymore. And people putting him in that conversation and just lying to themselves. Because he's not. But, again, he still puts in the effort. So he deserves respect for that. It's not like a thing that he's, you know, he's phoning it in. But it's become so blatantly obvious that we need a new left back. It should have been addressed, not summer gone, the summer before it wasn't. It absolutely should have been addressed this past summer. It wasn't. It absolutely needs to be addressed in January. There is a title sitting there for us to go and win. Upgrade the left back, upgrade the number six position. We can go and win that league title. They're the things you should have done in the summer. You know you should have done them. Get them done. Um, what else? Canate's lock, uh, lock screen and commentator loves Diaz. Five things spotted during Liverpool's win. Spanish reports say Aurelian Chiumeni is now available for transfer. If that's true, then it becomes very, very easy to look at who our top choice should be in that position. It is absolutely him. It is absolutely him. If he is available, we should put everything we can towards going and getting Aurelian Schumann. There's also a lot of talk, remember, as well, that Real are hoping to convince Rodri to join them. But Chiumeni would be a, a monumental upgrade for us, regardless of nonsense in this piece about Ryan Gravenberg and world-class form. He's playing well. He's not playing at a world-class level, and he's not playing as a six. He's playing in the sixth position. He's playing it as a number eight. Too many elevates this team several levels. And if you want to pair him with Gravenberg, great. But you go and you get him. You get him, you get 
in Capier, whoever, and we win the league. We win the league. Um, Pep Guardiola claims Man City only have 13 senior players fit. Okay. What Dominic Sabozlai said on high-profile misses after a night as number nine. Uh, Arla Slot sent messages, everything Cody Kakbo touched turned into a flaming missile. Uh, Slot made a point to praise Kwanzaa after brutal substitution. Uh, see, I don't think it's a brutal substitution. I really don't. I mean, they're, they're saying he had two costly moments against Brighton. Yeah, the Lauti shot hits his foot. It's not his foot. He's trying to get a block on it. The Lauti goal is Robertson's fault. Because his header is pitiful. I don't see the substitution as brutal. I know some people do, but I think that's just overreacting and wanting to moan about something. Uh, there's a piece about touts. 75 lifetime bans and 136 suspensions have been handed out for touting at Anfield. Good. Uh, what made Vitislav Yaros's first Liverpool start special? Again, the two saves. The, the save from the headers is just phenomenal. Um, right, what have Anfieldindex.com got for us? We will leave it in your own good hands to check out Liverpool.com, Anfield Watch, Dave will see Cop. Um, there's a piece on Young Rio who has said he thinks he can win the Ballon d'Or. Hopefully he can. There's a piece about Cody Gakbo, a piece about Jürgen talking about his Red Bull role, responding to some of the criticism. Uh, there's a piece about Carlos Beliba, who's now been linked with the Reds. There is a piece about Jim Boardman talking about um, what the season could hold for us. Podcast-wise, we have a new one, the Box Act Briefing, which is Ben post-match after Brighton giving the statistical breakdown and his own thoughts on the game. There's Arna Slot's uh, post-match press conference. The David Lynch podcast, the latest edition, is up there. There is the latest post-match Raw, which... Trev Downey made an appearance on, wasn't expecting that. I assumed it would be Guy hosting, but Trev Downey, Harry Setti, and Jim Boardman. And then there is a new Medium Matters, which is Dave Davis and David Lynch. So give all of those a listen. We will have a new scouted recording immediately after this, probably out later today. If not today, it'll be out in the morning. I guess later today, given it's a 3 p.m. kickoff on a Saturday. So that will do, folks. I shall see you all tomorrow. Enjoy the rest of your day. And as Downey once said, and hopefully we'll say regularly again, be kind to your fellow Reds out there. Except for me, I get to say whatever I want. Bye-bye. We hope you enjoyed listening to this Anfield Index show. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel so future podcasts find their way to your device automatically. There's nothing quite like fan engagement, and we'd love to know what you think of anything discussed on this show. The best way to get in touch is over on our free Discord community, where both podcasters and listeners debate the hottest LFC topics 24-7. Sign up free now at anfieldindex.com forward slash discord. You won't regret it. You can also follow us on Twitter at Anfield Index and find us on Facebook by searching for Anfield Index. Oh, and before you go, we'd love it if you could leave us a five-star review on your favourite podcast app. It only takes a couple of seconds, and it means the world to the people who create these free shows. This podcast is part of the Sports Social Podcast Network.